Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I'm actually going to be narrating this chapter titled, uh, what, what Does Egypt Represent to Us? Again, uh, this chapter is titled, What Does Egypt Represent to Us? And it's uh, from the... Um, it's from the book. Uh, it's from the book Exodus from Egypt. Is the name. Uh, here's the the book cover um, written by Paul Janadu of New Covenant Church. Um, anyhow, this is. It says out of all bondage and into Holy Spirit freedom by Paul Janadu. Um, so again, it's. Out of all bondage and into holy holy spirit freedom is titled exodus from egypt and the reason why i um, am actually um going out of my way to to explain it the way i am is because um i actually started reading it i was already narrating it um i ended up stopping the video and starting over again because um there's some stuff in here about deliverance uh, those of you who know me, um, those of you who know me uh, and, and know or know of me and uh, and the ministry, one of the ministries that I that I have um, that God has has allowed me to um, to to minister um, is uh, the California Deliverance Center, um, the YouTube channel that I have. Um, this will also be going up on. Um, and please disciple me as well because YouTube channel because that's where I put all these teachings but this one here uh, I noticed that he speaks on deliverance so I'm gonna be putting it on California Deliverance Center because um, not to stumble anybody but because a lot of you guys know that I um that I used to uh, narrate a lot of uh, David Middleton's books on deliverance, most of you guys that are actually even on California Donor Center are know of, know of or have received deliverance from him or from his ministry. Um, so, what I'm trying to get at is <laughs> you're going to hear some things that are that are probably contrary to how he believes or what he believes, um, and maybe not. So, I just pray that um, that that you would all uh, have an open open ears and open heart um, because the reason why I'm putting it this on California Deliverance Center is because I don't want to be one-sided on deliverance I don't want to be one-sided on oh well, this is the right way and you know I mean sure people spend many 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 years um, studying a specific um, ministry or maybe they're called into a specific ministry um, but I believe the narrator of this book who I haven't yet met um, he has spent, if not as many years as David Middleton, if not more, I think, maybe, or about the same. Um, so I want you to hear a different point of view about deliverance. Don't discredit it at all because it does work. I just did deliverance on somebody just the other day. I do deliverance on myself all the time. I do deliverance. We do deliverance all the time. But just... Just, um, you know, and, and this is actually going to be, for me, the first time I'm reading this chapter, I just read maybe the first little uh, intro part, like right that we're going to be reading right now, uh, and then I stopped it. So this is all new to me, so as we're reading, that way it'll be kind of fresh, and it won't sound like it was scripted. So um, without further ado, <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, chapter 1. Um Exodus from Egypt, book from Paul Janadu, Exodus from Egypt, chapter 1, what does Egypt represent to us? Okay, so what does Egypt represent to us? Egypt is the symbol of bondage and oppression. For the child of God. First, I want to I want to add on here. Bondage is this is 
So this is uh, Paul Giannetti speaking on the words on, the, on here, but I'm, I'm going to say something about bondage. Bondage is uh, is sin, and then and then what sin does after it's it, after it's ingested, which is usually how how it, how how I could describe it, sin is either ingested by um, by looking at something that you shouldn't be looking at by putting something in your mouth that you shouldn't be putting in your mouth. Um, uh, putting in your body that you shouldn't be putting in your body. Your hands, our eyes, our ears, our feet are um, instruments, the Bible says, of righteousness. So we, whatever our feet are leading us to is, is where our heart is pretty much leading us to because where you're being led is you're being led by your heart. Your your heart is leading you the direction that your feet are going to take you. Um, and and the further that you you're led away from the Lord, um, you're going to be get more oppressed. Oppression will come because, and then deep uh, depression it will come. <laughs> Anxiety and fear and pride and lust and perversion and anger and resentment and rejection and fear and ah, and you're just all freaking out and you're just like oh my gosh and it's just like it's just a mess and then you would call a deliverance minister or you'd go to a deliverance ministry for deliverance or you would need deliverance right that's what most of us think or know or have been taught um so I'm going to go ahead and, and keep going here. So Egypt is the simple symbol. And I, and I want to say something here too, because I personally, when somebody will call me for deliverance, um, personally me, I won't just, you know, just do deliverance on just whoever. Um, it has to be a candidate that, that, um, that for one is bad is, is born again, that I, I feel is born again. How am I going to know they're born again? Well, in such a short amount of time, well, I could pretty much tell by talking to somebody um, for a real short period of time whether or not they're born again. Even if I could tell if they're fronting, if they're if they're faking the funk, or um, you know what I mean. I could tell by I could tell by there's a lot of things I could tell by um, that or by uh, you know of course we have to judge them by their fruit. But in such a short period of time, you don't really have that that ch chance. And then there's discernment would come in, and then you'd be you have discernment to, to have to discern whether or not they're ready see for me what I do is I'll I will um I'll take them through a series of um of questions and I'm not not really questions yeah questions not very many questions but just a series of questions that kind of would um I could tell by their answers whether or not born again and then um and then what I do personally if you guys have seen my videos is I'll sit there and I'll uh and I'll um, do like biblical counseling for like a session um, and I'll just we'll go through certain I'll, I'll take that person or individual through specific um, uh, chapters verses um, you know Bible verses and things of that nature to, to explain to them about be, be, what born again being means and then um, on um, how demons enter um, those of you who know um, the, the book that I've narrated on uh, my YouTube channel titled um, <clears throat> Deliverance for All Christians. Uh, it's a really good good book. And then also um, uh, Once Saved, Always Saved is also another really, really good book. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, teach those, but I have those up on the channel. There's uh, many, many hours worth of teachings on those on those, but I, I could do it in a nutshell, probably within about 45 minutes to an hour. I could, I could, um, take somebody through before actually doing deliverance on them. Um, and what I'll usually do is I'll have it before I even, I won't do it all in the same session. I'll have them, um, I'll have them fast or, or the, I'll ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to, um, the Bible says that we have to bear witness. So I just pray that uh, I'd ask them if, if the Holy Spirit would lead them to to um, to fast, you know, um, and uh, for maybe twenty four hours, and then um, and then we and then and then I have the 
I have the um, deliverance questionnaire that I that I have been given that works really well. Uh, I give that to them, the pre-deliverance prayer, the post-deliverance prayer, and um, and then by then, you know, they before I even start doing the deliverance, I want to make sure that they understand the concept of deliverance and what it means and how to how to how to keep um, the demons out, <laughs> you know. Because the Bible says that they'll come back worse if you don't uh, have your house clean, swept, and put in order. So, with all that being said, um, I want to uh, say that the Word of God is very, very powerful. It's, because the Bible says it's, it's more powerful than a two-edged sword, and it cuts through bone and marrow. So, we cannot discredit the word of God casting out demons is very crucial and very important to me personally um, is very crucial and important um, to some people not to all people some people maybe have just you know have a different experience but the Bible does say that these signs will follow those who believe they will cast out demons in my name so everybody's different sure everyone's walks different everyone's um, you know has gotten demons in different ways and they've come out in different ways they, they come out in a main in, in a number of different ways um i've seen them come out through yawn sighs burps coughs belches um tears and lots of times i've had people just cry and, and then an inner 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 healing work really well um but so what i'm trying i'm not trying to placate um or, or trying to cover up or trying to um, do, I'm not trying to um, make what Paul Gennadio is saying of no effect or anything of that matter that's not what I'm doing or trying to say at all but what we want to do here is we want to make sure that when we're reading the Word of God we want to make sure that we have the spirit of wisdom the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of revelation to understand to discern the truth to discern the word of god correctly so that we're not deceived right that because that's what the devil wants to do is to deceive us so the reason why mr janadu is putting these material together is because he's giving us a different view okay we're not we're not we're not looking at deliverance from from david middleton's view we're looking at deliverance from mr paul janadu's view and so, um, you know, and, and a lot of times people won't want to hear what Paul Janadu has to say on deliverance because they've, uh, because they've made up their mind what David Middleton said is correct. <laughs> and then they'll, or, they'll, or they won't want to hear what David Middleton says because they, they, they're followers of, of New Covenant Church and they're, and they're ch true to the church and they feel like Mr. Janadu is the right one, that his, his, his way is right or, or, or you know so on for so on and so forth your church or whoever you follow on um, deliverance um, but these are men great men of faith who have um, who have been serving God day in and day out and day in and day out and day in and year out and year in and year out and century in and century out and century in and century out um, for many centuries um, who have who have bear much fruit worthy of repentance and 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 these are teachers and and men that are leaders um leaders and who have planted churches all over the world so um and been influences of many 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 disciples and they have fathered many people as well so um what i want to say is um please uh have an open heart when we read this book um, this is because I feel like in my spirit this is going to be a game changer for for me personally. Um, you know, in that I I studied deliverance because you know I was I, unfortunately I I was once you know afflicted and oppressed um, in my bondage by you know by demons and uh, it was because of my own my, my own um, free will of uh, of not understanding my calling, not understanding um, who I who I am in Christ, um, 
you know, not understanding what grace you know, truly is and what it means, um, and mercy, you know, we, we take advantage and, and we, because we don't, when you don't know something, you, you just, you just, you don't know it. You don't, you don't know. And, and that's what the devil wants to do is he wants to make us to where we don't know. <laughs> we, we don't know how to get free. He, he wants us to not know how to get free. He wants us to know how to, uh, he wants us to tell us who we're not and God wants to tell us who we are. So with that being said, um, I'm sure by now, those of you who are still on here listening to this are the ones that are actually going to stick this out because um, I've already been going here for a while and a lot of people, um, they, they just don't have the patience to listen to all this or they're just, or they're just turned off by whatever it is that they're being oppressed by. <laughs> so um, those of you who have stayed and who are here with me. Um, I want to salute you <laughs> in the name of Jesus and uh, just say, you know, um, let's let's go through this together. Let's um, let's let's get through this book and let's let's do it together and uh, let's see how how God would um, transform and renew our minds. So, uh, without further ado, I just pray, Father Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that um, God, you would open our ears, our spiritual ears, to hear. Um, and those who are watching um, on video, open our eyes to see. Um, you know, as we read the word, as as we read these words that um, have been spoken um, through the Holy Spirit, through um, Paul Janadu, um, we pray that that they would that you would radiate to us, radiate um, to us, and that we would receive them um, as the Spirit would lead. Um, I don't believe, and I pretty much say without a reason of a doubt, there. Uh, there may not be any um, false teaching in here, and, and 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 not only that, I I I don't even want to assume it because um, it's just a spirit in me. Maybe I need to cast out of of, of fear. Of <laughs> I bind a spirit of fear in me personally, and I command it to come out of me in the name of Jesus. Because what happens a lot of times, um, you guys, is that when we're taught a certain way, um, we it's like it's like say you went to school for for 20 years to learn how to be a lawyer and then all of a sudden they threw the law book out and they said that that doesn't matter anymore yeah there's a new law book <laughs> you know it's like ah you just, you just would rather just dismiss it and say no that's not that's a that's a false person that wrote that you know so uh so i thank you father that, that every spirit of um unbelief or doubt or worry or fear Ooh, ah, here it goes come out of us in jesus name <laughs> amen amen okay so here we go egypt okay what does egypt represent to us um actually hold on you guys one second i i, I know you guys let's um those of you guys who are watching this video you can actually stop the video because it's not running live um but or fast forward it because I'm actually going to grab a cup of coffee real quick. It's in the I can hear the uh, it's already ready, so it'll take me just not even a minute. Just please give me one second. Thank you. Some of you guys have already cheated and probably went ahead of me and read it <laughs> already, but that's okay. I'm going to read it again. All right. So Egypt is the symbol of bondage and oppression for the child of God. Egypt is a symbol of bondage and oppression for the child of God. You cannot, here we go, <laughs> pray it away, cast it out. 
or make positive confession out of it. So that right there would be a, a major uh, red light to a lot of people who have taught, been taught that that's the only way it comes out. That's the only way demons come out is through casting them out, right? That's, that was the first thing I thought when I, when I read this. But let's be open um, to what he's saying and, uh, and read it through the whole way instead of just... Because a lot of people, what they do is they, um, they'll read the Bible and they're like, oh, I don't like what that says and I'm just going to... I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna fast forward through this part. <laughs> you know, well, um, we're not gonna do that today. You cannot pray it away, cast it out, or make positive confession out of it. I have spent the best part of look, 40, 40 years in deliverance ministry. So forty years—that's a long time. That's almost as old as I am. Um, so I know what I'm talking about. Okay. You find that the same set of people come up for prayer time and time again. Correct. I totally agree with that. There's people that follow deliverance ministries and they're just obsessed with demons and they want to they want to always find a demon in them somehow, some way. There's always there's always I have a demon of this, I have a demon of that. <laughs> you know. Uh, fun. Uh, okay. It is a roller coaster existence. <laughs> As they get victory over one problem, another one will soon rear up its head. Exactly. It took many years of praying and observing before it dawned on me I wasn't really giving permanent solution. Amen. So what, what do we want to do as Christians, as men and women of God who um who who are who are ministers, ministers of the Lord? We want to find the solution, right? We we don't want to just see a lot of people. They 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 don't they haven't found the solution, or they don't know how to how to express the solution. So they'll just do what they know. Um, or some people will, um, you know, will teach or will become really teaching teachers of of that one specific ministry. Um, but with that being said, I hope I'm not. Okay. With that being said, I just want to just uh, wanted to add that because, um, because probably I, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have just added that. But anyhow, okay. I'm gonna stay focused here, you guys, <laughs> and stop trying to stop trying to waver around here around the around the mountain. Okay. I wasn't really giving permanent solution to these dear people. Okay. So he's admitting that he wasn't per he's giving permanent solution. To the people, what they need is okay. Not deliverance. Okay, stop. <laughs> what they need is not deliverance, which a lot of us think that that's what they that's what they need is deliverance. But he, this is what Paul tonight is saying is that what they need is not deliverance. Now let's let's give them let's give them the give them the stage here because this is his book and I'm and this is my homework and I have to do this homework and we need to have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. <laughs> What they need is not deliverance, amen, but the full gospel. So, the full gospel, amen. Amen and amen. I totally agree. He's, he's, what he's, he's not discrediting deliverance. See, your, your train of thought would think, as soon as they say what they need is not deliverance, oh, well, that's, that's just wrong, you know? But that's not what he's saying. He's saying that they don't need just deliverance. They need the full gospel. But is that what he said? Hold on. What they need is not deliverance. So what he's saying is, so he is discrediting deliverance, right? For now. Um, but let's, let's, let's keep reading. But the full gospel. They need to know how to live the victorious Christian life. The gospel promises us. I totally agree with that. Now, What I want to share on this point is, um, this ministry, this, because I know because I've, um, I've studied, and um, I've studied the, the discipleship material, all the three discipleship uh, materials, and um, I have those up on my YouTube channel as well. On um, please disciple me. Uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the first one was 
uh, BBC Believers in Christ. The second one was uh, um, New Believers in Christ, I believe. And then the third one was um, Authority of the Believer. So the reason why he does these and he ha and he's doing what he's doing here is because he has a um, Mr. Janadu has a uh, very unique ministry, um, and that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm um, I I've I've decided to follow Jesus with this with this um, with this tribe is because they um, they are not only disciples but they're disciple makers. Um, and that's what God, Jesus, uh, would commanded us to go into the world and make disciples. So they're all about making disciples. And um, and the the kicker is they are this ministry is all about building foundations. So that so there, it's not just discipleship, discipleship, discipleship. Like everyone, every every church does discipleship, right? They like, oh, we're gonna meet at the. We're going to meet at the house and house meetings and all that, which is great. It's great to have house meetings. It's great to have house church, right? We talk about that in in um, BBC. But it goes beyond that. What this money ministry has done for me personally is it's because I, because I had an open heart and I, I basically was ready to, you know how, I just said earlier right now about how we, you know, we've been trained a certain way, we've been taught a certain way. Um, well, a lot of times they'll just continue in that way, and, and you know, and and they're not willing to find to hear another way because they're they're just stuck in their way, <laughs> right? Just like a lot of people, you can't lead a horse to water. You can't. I mean, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink it, right? So uh, as as um, as more mature Christians, um, we we want to be, you know, and, and the Spirit of the Lord would make us be, make us want to be more uh, susceptible to to hearing the voice of God, right? And hearing, um, hearing, you know, a different revelation, you know, um, because that's what these are. This is a different revelation that that um, that Paul Janadu has in this area. Um, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just he knows that it works for him. Um, as long as it's working, um, and it works. You know, as a Christian, we want to know. We want to hear. We want to know every way that works, right? We want to be able to have an arsenal, an arsenal of um, of weapons to uh, to uh, dismantle um, different mindsets in other believers. So, with that being said. Um, with that being said, we want to, um, be, um, we want to just be hearers and doers of the word. So we want to hear as much as we can. Um, even if it's, if it doesn't bear witness with us, it's fine. It doesn't mean, it, it doesn't mean that you, you that you you have to just write it off, right? It's it's not like these people have taken their time to write these these books, and it's what works for them. And not only that, um, this is what their heart their heart this is what their their heart this is their their life this is their um, vision this is their um, their heart this is you know they, they, people didn't just write these books just to write them they, they, these, this is stuff that they that they um. That they that they wrote out of experience, so. Um, okay, I'm just getting off here. I'm getting off here on, on on what 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 we're supposed to be reading. Um, I wasn't really giving permanent solution to these dear people. What they need is not deliverance, but the full gospel. They need to know how to live the victorious Christian life in the gospel. The gospel promises us. Okay, so that's what I was, I was. So I was getting at something when I was saying all that. So what I was getting at was uh, building building a foundation. So, um, so obviously, um, for me, you know, I, as I'm growing in the Lord, I'm learning new things. Um, 
the basic things. A lot of times people, um, I want to say in the American church, um, but I can't say that because I haven't been anywhere else other than the American church. So um, I know that where I, where I live in, the, in America, um, you know, that you have different tribes, different uh, denominations, and I mean, there's a lot of them. Um, and they all believe the, their their way, right? They and obviously they, they discredit they discredit the the way you believe because they're obviously not with that denomination that you're in. So they they believe something is off um, about your denomination and my denomination or whoever's denomination, and they're not. Um, it, it, it's because it's the way they were tra trained or taught or they were raised up in that d d denomination, right? Some of, some people, some of you have been Calvary Chapel people, and, and, and Calvary Chapel is the only way, and and and, and your your way, and, and uh, some of you have, are with this church or that church, and, and this church and that church or this ministry, and that ministry, and um, and it's like there's like. A war among us, you know. It talks about in James, the battle is not is not among us, and a war among us. We're not supposed to be battling and fighting each other as Christians. We're supposed to be coming together in, in the unity, and as Ephesians says, in the unity for the gospel. So, um, you know, we want to be open, and, and we want to know what and how other people believe, um, not be so one sided and. Um, stuff like that. So what I'm trying to say here is, with all that said, <laughs> I know I'm dragging on here, um, is foundation, foundation, foundation. And, and, and who's the corner cornerstone? The cornerstone uh, is Jesus. Jesus is the cornerstone. So the cornerstone goes in. Without the cornerstone, there is no foundation. Because you take the cornerstone out and the foundation falls if you take the cornerstone out, the foundation falls because that's what's holding it up. So some people might have Jesus, but they don't have, they might have the cornerstone, but they don't have the foundation. They never have the foundation built. Um, so you want to make sure that that your foundation, your foundation is, is, is strong. You want to make sure that that there's no cracks in your foundation. You want to make sure that, that that you're firmly rooted and grounded in the foundation. You want to make sure that the foundation is built upon the cornerstone in, on Jesus Christ. Jesus, if, if you're trained, if you're trained in the ways of the Lord, there's supposed to be it's a process and it's supposed to be like from a baby Christian to being built up in the Lord and being strengthened in Christ a lot of people are being brought into ministries and they're being taught how to cast out demons how to lay hands on the sick how to how to do do signs and miracles and wonders before they learn how to walk they're 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 they're, they're they're giving their lives to the Lord and then all, all of a sudden, right away, they're teaching them how to cast out devils. And that's, I'm sorry, but it, it's not wrong, but it's just, there's a better way. And uh, that's what New Covenant Church does, is they um, they teach you, they, they, they help you build a foundation. They, they, they help you build a foundation. They tear down, um, they, in love, the Bible says that by his goodness, men are drawn to him. So it's by grace that we're drawn, and then so God could go and he could he could he could tear down the the the, the tear down the um, the walls of separation, the walls that are the the foundation that that is not that wasn't built on on a firm foundation. It wasn't built on the cornerstone correctly. Like sometimes, let me give an example. Sometimes you can go somewhere and you'll see uh, you'll see you'll see the concrete and it'll have cracks in it like it, it cracks right and it has it has cracks um, or you can tell that or it starts crumbling and falling in or whatever it's because it wasn't it wasn't poured right the concrete 
wasn't poured correctly. So, uh, with New Covenant Church, what they do is they, 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 they take their time in pouring the foundation and building the foundation. And pouring the foundation, they don't just bring all the, all the concrete trucks in at one time and just dump the concrete down. They pour, they, they take time, they put up, the, they do this and they do that. And that's what, that's what these, these, these books are. That's what these teachings are about. Is they, so that when, so that when it's time to learn deliverance or it's time to learn this or that and this and that, that you you already have the foundation to start to build a house. So that when, so when the storms come and the trials come, you're going to be standing firm. You're going to be standing Standing firm, and you're not going to fall. You know, nobody wants to invest in something that's going to fall. Nobody wants to invest in something that's going to uh, that's not going to make it, right? We're we're hoping that everyone's going to make it. We're praying that everyone's going to make it. We're we're investing in others uh, because because God has invested in us. So, with that being said, uh, we're going to just continue to. Um, to, to to read and to understand uh, how Mr. Janadu is, uh, is speaking to us in and through these teachings. Amen. So one common symptom of being in Egypt is what happens in your dream life. One common symptom of being in Egypt is what happens in your dream life. Most people, if not everybody, dreams. In the majority of cases, these dreams are purely natural and meaningless. In fact, and this is another thing, a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys are, see this, 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 <laughs> this, these teachings are, are going to be, there's going to be a lot of stuff I can tell in this book that, that we haven't heard before. So, um, don't, don't just discredit it because, because it sounds off. Let, let's give this man uh, of God a chance to speak and, um, and have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in and through him. Because if, if we can learn something, uh, let's learn it. Let's, let's grow and let's learn from it. Um. So a lot of you guys would think, oh well, no, I've been I've been dreaming for so many years, and this and that, and blah blah blah, and I've been given prophetic dreams and this and that, which is it, it does happen. But um, let's let's just listen to what he has to say, and then the scriptures that he's given us to back up uh, what it is he's he's telling us. So one common symptom of being in Egypt is what happens in your dream life. One common symptom of being in Egypt is what happens in your dream life. Most people, if not everybody, dreams. In the majority of cases, these dreams are purely natural and meaningless. In fact, most people do not remember their dreams. For some, however, dreams play a major role in their lives. The more attention you pay to your dreams, the more vivid and meaningful they become. Again, for some, however, dreams play a major role in their lives, right? We just spoke about the more attention you pay to your dreams, the more vivid and meaningful they become. It is true that God can can and does speak to people in dreams. So he's not discrediting it. He's just saying, okay, so, so uh, Num Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 says, uh, listen to my words when there is a prophet among you. Listen to my words when there is a prophet among you. I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Uh, okay. I actually let's see here numbers twelve six. 
Okay. In fact, God has been revealing Jesus to Muslims over the years this way, bringing many to faith in Christ. Here is an extract from Luasene World Pulse Archives. More than dreams, Muslims coming to Christ through dreams and visions. In the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. For decades, a well-documented phenomenon has been occurring in the Muslim world. Men and women who, without knowledge of the gospel or contact among Christians in their community, have experienced dreams and visions of Jesus Christ. The reports of these supernatural occurrences often come from closed countries where there is no preaching of the good news and where converting to Christianity can invoke the death sentence. But these are more than just dreams. Setting them apart is the intense reality of the experience and the surrender of one's heart and mind to Christ in the wake of such dreams. A common denominator appears to be that the dreams come to those who are seeking as best they can to know and please God. Beginning in 2002, a group of people interested in this phenomenon took initial steps in bringing it to the attention of a worldwide audience through a series of video programs. Numerous on-site interviews were conducted with former Muslims who had experienced a dream or vision of Jesus resulting in their conversation to Christianity. From the outset, the producers endeavored to represent a global cross-section of Islam in the series. And for that reason, stories were sought in Arabic speaking countries, Muslim areas throughout Africa and Asia. And the secular Muslim nation of Turkey. For example, Khalil. In September 2004, production began in high definition video on the first of five stories. It was the remarkable account of Khalil, a radical Egyptian terrorist who was changed from a murderous Saul to a forgiving Paul. He set out to discredit the Bible, but could not. And although he despised Christians and Jews, his heart was changed forever when the Savior appeared to him in a dream that penetrated his soul. Muhammad, Muhammad of northern Nigeria, did not have just one dream of Jesus Christ. He had seven. Son of a prominent Fulani herdsman, Muhammad had studied the Quran in depth at several Muslim schools. He was preparing to leave for advanced studies in Saudi Arabia when he experienced a series of dreams that convinced him of the deep love and lordship of Jesus Christ. Although his father tried to kill him in the wake of his conversation, Muhammad survived the various attempts on his life and preserved in his Christian walk. Persevered in his Christian walk, eventually leading his father to faith in Christ. Amen. These are just a small sample to show how God has been and continues to reveal Jesus to Muslims and indeed other faiths and bring them to salvation through faith in Christ. So, dreams in certain settings are a legitimate medium used by God to communicate with people. Um, so there's a video two summary, what it means to dwell in Egypt as a believer. Is that, uh, there's a uh, QR code. So, uh, all right, so that's chapter one is done there. Uh, we're gonna be 
yeah, I'm going to cut this video right now. And the next chapter will be uh, chapter two, dreams in the Bible. So, um, well, there was, he didn't really talk too much on deliverance. He's just, uh, which is fine. Um, so I might not put this up on that channel. Anyways, um, anyways I'll, I'll stop this video now. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope to hope that you guys would, um, would watch or listen or watch and listen. <laughs> Uh, the next chapters and all the chapters of this book and I, I would really um, actually like um, to hear your um, your opinions or, or uh, on how what you learned or if anything or what you what you maybe disagree with or what you don't do disagree with or I just want to like to um, to have um, uh, monologue with uh, whoever's watching these videos on the comments um, please make sure to comment like or dislike uh, whatever it is that you you like we're trying to um, we're trying to share this as, with as much people as possible um, so that we would have a, more of a better understanding of um, of what it is and how it is and what it means to be Christians and how to serve and in in um, better ways and to do great exploits for Jesus so um, with that being said thank you guys have a great day God bless